Kara Walker's work is a dark and at times sinister exploration of race, gender, sexuality and violence in American history and society. Best known for her life-size black paper silhouettes, her current exhibition at the Camden Arts Centre also includes drawings and a video installation of a shadow play. Is it true that you decided to become an artist when you were just three years old? Uh, it, it's legend that I wanted to become an artist when I was three, and uh, it's, it's largely true. I mean, at least that's how I like to think of it. My father's a painter, and um, I spent a lot of time, well, my sister and brother and I all spent time in his studio, and he encouraged us in, in art. But uh, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure I wanted to be just like him at that age. Yeah. How significant do you think your own upbringing was on the themes and issues addressed in your work? And did growing up in the South give you a particular experience of ongoing racial inequality? Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm not originally from the South, so I think moving to the South at uh, the age of 13 from a, you know, not an, an uncomplicated childhood, but definitely one that, um, which wasn't steeped in some of the legacies of uh, racism and slavery and uh, Jim Crow laws and segregation that, uh, you know, I, I recognized were, you know, the themes were present, more present for me in the South. And um, both my parents left the South as small children so there's, you know, a little bit of a family recognition of uh, racism that I was blind to until a ripe age, <laughs> to my ripe adolescence. Where did the idea of working with paper silhouettes come from? Uh, I started cutting the paper when I was in graduate school, and there were a lot of reasons, or actually probably too many to mention in a short span, but it, I was rejecting painting and I was thinking about my relationship to a certain type of like grand historical oil painting that I was really drawn to but felt kind of uh, left out, you know, left out of the narrative. So I, I started investigating other ways of maybe mark making that were uh, also sort of forgotten forms or second class forms of uh, art making. Do you see your work as primarily fact or fiction or is it a combination of both? I think my work is all about this conflation of fact with fiction that happens as, you know, unassailable, you know, un, uh, um, hurtful and harmful truths are revealed and assimilated and, and turned around. I think that part of the sort of human mechanism is to kind of distance oneself from lived realities through you know, story and song and joke and, you know, ridicule and, and other forms of violence, actually. And do you think your work's political? Um, it's political in that it uh, references history. I mean, it can't not be political. I don't think it's activist in the way that uh, maybe artists of a generation ahead of me might have made work that talked about black history as, a, you know, and even talking about history and black history in particular is a political act, but uh, it's not aiming to um, change policy. <laughs> in 1997, after becoming one of the youngest people to receive a MacArthur Fellowship, your work became the subject of criticism by an older generation of African-American artists. How did it feel to be attacked by the very people you were representing? Um, well, I've, I've thought a lot over the years since my work got a lot of positive attention, a lot of negative attention. Um, because I was getting negative attention from artists who were of my father's generation, really black artists who sort of even created the modern black arts movement in the 60s, um, really, uh, I mean, they took issue with my work, but took issue with my work in a lot of different ways. You know, and some of it was quite personal, and some of it was quite critical of the sort of mechanisms of the art world and the art market, who's looking at the work, who's buying it, what kind of uh, uh, images or negative representations might get supported by, uh, you know, the establishment. Um, so I can understand where they're coming from, but I was not really keen on the political or the, the personal nature of some of the attack. You've said that you don't really believe in redemptive stories and that there is always a continuity of conflict with people forgetting and making mistakes. Can you talk a little about this and the ongoing need to reflect on the issues that you tackle in your work? 
I don't know if I know how to restate that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I think I, I, I was kind of been fascinated by uh, those sort of amateur historians, that, you know, I would encounter every now and then who, you know, can take a little piece of fact, a little bit of information from the historical record, and then through the sort of process of digesting and understanding it, uh, maybe unintentionally glom on their own sort of personal, you know, foibles and peccadillos and, and anxieties and um, histories. And uh, I don't really remember what your question was, but <laughs> I am really interested in, in the way that, that uh, uh, History can be uh, sort of misused uh, to sort of further uh, some kind of personal goal. And I'm not trying to do that, but I am interested in the way that, that I'm just interested in the way that, that history can become a kind of a mythology. And, um, and I position myself as a kind of unreliable narrator of a kind of, you know, historical uh, manifesto or something. You incorporate a lot of text into your works. Do you believe that it's necessary to have language as well as imagery? Uh, I use language and text in my work sometimes as a way to kind of uh, uh, back up from the, the kind of excesses of imagery in my work. I, it's, I, I started you know, using text because I was reading a lot and just trying to understand the material, that, you know, historical records and fi uh, slaves' narratives and, you know, fictions like Gone with the Wind or Uncle Tom's Cabin. Things like that were just sort of catalysts for understanding my relationship to the text. And so I would just use text and write, or sometimes the writing is automatic writing, sometimes it's um, a little bit more critical. But I, I just feel like that's one way of working that I have. And, you also make use of caricature and stereotype, almost as forms of exaggerated humour. Do you think it's necessary when dealing with serious issues such as race, gender and violence? I don't know if it's necessary, I just, it's, it's what I do because I, I'm, I'm interested not so much in, like I said, I'm interested in the, the narrative of the narrative, you know, I'm sort of interested in the, the, uh, the stereotypes that I've already received, you know, that already pre-exist, you know, in the world before I came to them. And uh, they're exaggerated because they were already exaggerated. They're exaggerated because the kind of history of violence that comes with racism, which is all so absurd and so outrageous and so kind of, um, you know, you read these accounts of, of uh, uh, people being victimized by race or because of their race and the, and the, the extremes that, uh, that perpetrators of violence will go to in order to sort of like banish this like very physical idea of, of a, you know, of a person as it's, it's absurd. So why not be completely extreme and outrageous and, you know, pull that kind of sensibility out of myself and out of a viewer. Your work is quite dark and sometimes quite sinister too. Does it ever unsettle you? And what do you do to step back from it all at the end of the day? Uh, my work always unsettles me. If it doesn't unsettle me, then it's not right, you know, or it's just, yeah, it's just something like uh, pretty, you know, it's like art, you know, then it's art and I don't really always want to make art, um, but uh, I step back and I'll do, sometimes I'll write or, um, you know, my practice is really a drawing practice, so, you know, I'll just try and find a way back into my, into my thoughts without becoming completely um, paranoid and sort of burdened by this, you know, this trap. I kind of set myself up for a trap in, in dealing with race in the first place. And so, yeah, it's good to escape. Do you think your work will be understood by British audiences? I think so. I mean, I, I think, you know, England has a, a history of colon, you know, colonialism. You have, you know, plenty of black people, you know, I mean, you've got, you know, and I think that my work runs the gamut of, of the types of representation of sort of this idea of blackness, you know, and as it encounters, you know, the West or as it encounters the civilized, you know, these ideas of the savage and ideas of, of the servant and all of that sort of runs through my work and, you know, ideas of liberation and, and, and freedom um, come along and sort of counteract that. So I think that's, it'll feel familiar.
What does it mean for you to be having your first major solo exhibition in the UK at the Camden Arts Centre? Um, having my first UK solo show 19 years into my career is kind of crazy in a way. It feels like I'm having like my debutante ball. You know, I'm, like gonna, I'm gonna walk in like sort of cotillion gown or something because <laughs> it's, it's kind of great. I, 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 it's like a chance to revisit the themes of my work, but also kind of say, well, this is where I'm at now. You know, like the work is kind of moving, you know, a couple of directions at once.